Hi, John from the Historic Game Shop here. In this video I'm going to discuss the development of tables games and how the game of backgammon was originated. Tables games have their origins in the Roman world, probably around the time of the late Republic or early Empire. The now familiar game of backgammon is played on a board that has two rows of 12 points each divided into six with a bar down the middle of the board. The Romans initially played what were probably similar games on a board with three rows of 12 each divided into six. They probably played on this a number of different games which may have included duodecum scripta or 12 lines or possibly marks, possibly referring to the highest score on two dice. Alea is another word associated with the Roman game, though this also translates as dice, which could mean that playing Alea simply means playing a dice game, which these games were probably considered. Alea is associated with the later three-row board, which may well have used three dice. The word tabula is also associated with the game and means table or board, and refers to the game board on which it is likely a number of games were played. This word has evolved in this context into the Spanish tablas and into the English tables. Both terms refer to the board on which the games were played. Charles Cotton, in his book The Complete Gamester, written in 1674, refers to games within tables, listing six games. He also lists a number of games without tables, meaning dice games that do not use the tables board. Now, quickly back to the Romans. What were their games like? Well, unfortunately, there is insufficient information to allow for the reconstruction of the details of the games played, although boards have been found across what was the Roman Empire, and so the equipment used is better known. This board is from Holt in North Wales, dating to the 2nd century AD, and was made from ceramic, while others were carved from stone, such as this one from the Agora of Aphrodisias, in Turkey, also from the 2nd century AD, and this one from Ephesus, also in Turkey, from the beginning of the 1st century BC. Undoubtedly, wooden boards existed too, though there are many finds of the game scratched or carved into pavements all over the Roman world, this one from the Apollo Temple at Didyma in Turkey. Other boards had six-letter words making up a phrase or insult in place of the squares denoting the positions for the counters. Over a hundred of these has been found, and date mostly to late 1st and early 2nd centuries AD. This one translates as, The virtue of the empire, the enemies are in chains, Romans play, and comes from Trier in Germany. Another is this, translating as, The circus is crowded, ear-deafening cheers, the gates are strained, and comes from the Via Portuense in Rome. Finally, this one translates as, Hunting, bathing, playing, laughing, this is living. This comes from Timgad in Algeria. In around 250 AD, evidence emerges for three row boards being adapted by removing one of the outer rows, leaving two rows. And by the 4th century, there is evidence for the manufacture of such boards. The finds of these boards suggest that whatever game existed for play on the three row board was perhaps too slow and tedious. We've played possible games, and some are. Faster two-row games were possibly invented, but most probably games initially played on the three-row board were adapted. As for how games were played, evidence is slim. However, one find of a three-row board from Ostia, the port of ancient Rome, has the positions for the counters replaced by the letters A, B, C, D and E, each in sets of six, with two sets of six of the letter A along the central line. This has given some games historians the suggestion that play for both players begins on the left of the centre line at A, through to the right, and then through B, then C, then D, bearing off at the end of E. This parallel movement, which I will discuss further a little later on, is comparable with other evidence. However, there are finds of other boards which have different arrangements of letters, possibly suggesting different directions of play. Two further vital pieces of evidence appear in the later 5th and 7th centuries. Taking these in reverse chronological order, Isidore, Archbishop of Seville in the early 600s, here he is on the left, 
from an illuminated manuscript from the second half of the 10th century and another one from around 800. He described the materials required for a game called Elia, played on a three-row board as 15 men for each of the two players and three dice. If the name of the earlier game of Duodecum Scripta refers to the highest score on two dice, then Elia, using three dice, would most likely be a faster game. Some 150 years earlier, sometime in the year 480, the Byzantine Emperor Zeno, pictured here on a coin issued during his reign in the second half of the 5th century, sat down to play his favourite ball game. This was also a game of 15 men for each of two players and three dice, but on the two-row board. It was not long after the game had begun that the Emperor rolled the three dice which placed him in such a difficult position that he felt he was sure to lose. He was so affected by this that he decided to write a description of the game, retold by Agathias, Greek poet and historian, some 50 years later. Forever since known as Zeno's game, this evidence allows for the reconstruction of rules for a Roman tables game. In the reconstructed game from Agathias' description, both players have 15 men off the board at the start of the game. On the roll of three dice, the men are entered onto the board at the top left, and during the course of the game they move through to the top right, then across the bottom from the right and bearing off bottom left. This parallel movement is comparable with the three-row ball from Ostia mentioned earlier. The three dice are used independently and may be used to move one man three times or three men once each. Single men on a position are vulnerable and if landed upon must begin again from the top left. For Zeno, the game had not long started and both players had all 15 men on the board. Zeno was playing white and had a stack of seven men on position six. It was his turn and he threw a two, five and a six. He had no choice but to break up three of his protected stacks of two. Using the six, he moved a man from 10 to 16. Using the five, he moved a man from 19 to 24. Using the two, he moved a man from 20 to 22. The result was eight unprotected men across the board, any of which were potentially vulnerable after Zeno's opponent's next throw of the dice. Having to re-enter three men while black was in such an advantageous position would, thought Zeno, mean the likely loss of the game. There seems to be little evidence of the game in Europe towards the end of the first millennium AD, though in early medieval European literature there are tantalisingly brief mentions of playing tables games. However, there is little information on any individual game or the construction of boards until the 12th and the 13th centuries. We must now turn to the game in the Near and Middle East, where different origins theories are presented. The game of Nard Shir is mentioned in the Babylonian Talmud, written between the 4th and the 6th centuries. So a little earlier than the reference by Isidore, Archbishop of Seville, in the early 600s, but around the same time as Zeno's game, reported by Agathias in the early 500s. One story suggests that Nard Shir was invented by Ard Shir I, the founder of the Sasanian Empire who ruled in the early 3rd century AD seen here on a gold coin. He was at war with Rome during the time, and this contact with Rome is important as a likely source of the equipment used for the game. Another slightly later mention is made in the Persian romance Shatrang Namak, written between the 7th and the 9th centuries. The game was purportedly invented by a Persian sage named Bazorgma, vizier to the Persian court in the 6th century, pictured here in a sculpture in Bazorgmes Square in Isfahan in central Iran. It is said that he invented the game and sent it to India after the ruler of India had sent chess to the Sasanian court to work out the logic of the game. Here he is playing chess with the Indian envoy, and here he is demonstrating Nadshir to the Indian court. Both these manuscripts are from the later medieval period. This invention of Nard, as it became known, by Bazorgmir, is repeated in later medieval Persian literature. The game becomes popular in Persia and then throughout the Muslim world. 
The rules of the early game do not survive, though the popularity of Nard in the medieval period in the Near East and Central Asia has allowed for a reconstruction of ancient rules from later literature. Unlike Zeno's game, Nard is a game of contrary movement, with each player having all 15 men opposite each other on the first point. While it is most likely that the equipment for the game was borrowed from an earlier Roman source, it is entirely plausible that a game, one of contrary movement, was invented in the Persian court. Nard is similar to later games in Europe, and it is suggested that Nard was brought into Europe with other Islamic games, into Spain, or possibly by crusaders returning from the Holy Land in the 1200s. Some reconstructed rules of Nard, however, treat blots in a different way. Unprotected men on a point may be captured by an opposing man landing on the point. The captured man may not move until the capturing man moves on. Blots do not go to the bar, nor do they have to be re-entered, as in other games. Nard is now very popular in Greece and the Eastern Mediterranean, through the Near East and further north. National rules vary and caused captured blots to be placed on the bar while others have no captured blots. We will return to the role of Nard in the origins of these games a little later. Back in Europe, this 12th century board from Saint-Denis in France is typical of the period being made of a single rectangular piece of wood. Only the points, the central bar and border survive on the Saint-Denis board, but it probably looked like this in Reconstruction. In 1283, Alfonso X of Castile, also known as Alfonso the Wise, here he is pictured in one of his many books, had translated from an Islamic text a book of games. This contained chess and tables games, as well as a range of other games known throughout Europe at the time. The boards of many of the games are polychromic, painted in bright colours, and the tables boards are no exception. As well as a range of tables games, the book also contains a four-player tables game and a version with seven points rather than six in each house. Both of these use seven-sided dice, which the book also describes. Alfonso's book also contains the description of a range of tables games, which suggests that a similar number may well have been played on boards in the few hundred years leading up to the writing of Alfonso's book, even as far back as the Roman world. The question we need to ask is whether there is any continuity between the little we know of the Roman game and the emergence in Europe of information about games in the 13th century. Most games historians divide up tables games into categories based upon movement. So there are games with no movement, simply a starting position and bearing off with an exact roll of the dice, or the reverse, where dice are rolled to bear men on into exact positions. The other two categories are games with contrary movement, where men are entered opposite each other and move in opposite directions, and parallel movement, entering or starting at the same or opposite position but moving in the same direction. The parallel and contrary movement categories are broken down into groups of related games, often one a predecessor of another. Alfonso's games include Doblet and Los Dos Cans, both games of no movement. Doblet has a starting position and players try to bear the men off on the roll of two dice. In Los Dos Cans, players attempt the reverse, with the men off the board at the start. Alfonso also describes games of contrary movement, such as Buff de Baldriac. This game, where men off the board at the start are entered at diagonally opposing corners. This is the predecessor of the American game AC Ducey. In his book of games, also, is a tables game called Imperador, known in Britain as Ludus Anglicorum, a game of the English where each player has a stack of 15 men opposite each other on the end points of the board. One player moves anti-clockwise, bearing off where the other player starts. The other player does the reverse. This game is comparable with Nard, and supports the idea that the game moved into Europe through the Islamic influence in Spain. The game of Todes Tablas, described by Alfonso, has a starting position which is the same as backgammon, and is played with two dice. Blots, however, are returned to the first point of that player's side. Setup and movement are comparable with the games of Irish and Backgammon, which I'll discuss later. 
Alfonso describes a game of parallel movement called buffer, in which men are entered at the top right, moving anti-clockwise to be borne off at the bottom right. This is comparable with the game played by Emperor Zeno in the late 5th century, and possibly the game played on the Roman three-row board. The game described by Alfonso adds that a throw of a double allows a second roll, but also a number roll that is unusable may be used by the player's opponent. These two innovations are common in other early tables games. This game is also known as Pomacary in the 14th century in Britain. In the 14th and 15th centuries, tables boards became hinged, allowing them to be folded. Each panel is square and opened out is much the same size and shape of the single piece boards of the 12th and 13th centuries. Several examples have been found, most notably this one from Freiburg in Germany, published by Ulrich Muller in 1996. The points are inlaid and the board is mitred. At this time, a number of games were being played, only one of which possibly fails, comparable with the game of Phallas described by Alfonso, was one of the predecessors of backgammon. This is a game of contrary movement, with each player having a stack of 13 men opposite each other adjacent to the bar and two men on the points furthest from the bar. Black here moves clockwise while white moves anti-clockwise. Two games, Imperial and Provincial, appear in the 14th century, both games of contrary movement, where the aim is to pile up all 15 men on the final point according to their direction of movement. Tables games in the 16th century included doublets, a game of no movement, a starting position with men having to be borne off with an exact roll of the dice, comparable with Alfonso's doublet. Also, catch dolt, where men have to be borne onto and then off the board with exact rolls of the dice, but again with no movement. Both games use only half of the table's board. There were games where men were moved from a starting position to be borne off, following parallel movement, though a number of these had unequal and seemingly eccentric placements of the two players' men. Such games are described by Alfonso, Laquette and El Seis dos e As, and survived until the 16th century, Barreil and Miles. Table sports in the 16th century became narrower, each panel being rectangular, hinged along their long sides. This, from the Mary Rose, is typical. In the 17th century, larger boards with heavy borders are seen and are typified by those in Jan Steen's 1665 depiction of an argument over a card game. The game, known as Irish from the late 16th century, is the direct predecessor of backgammon, which appears in the mid-17th century. Irish revolves some games such as Alfonso's Todas Tablas, but also elements of Cannes Tablas, as well as other games of contrary movement. Opening position and direction of movement are important defining characters of a game, but the outcome of captured blots also has a range of options, such as leaving the board to be re-entered, El Seis Dos Eas and Laquette, to be placed on the bar and having to be re-entered before any other men may be moved, Cans Tablas, placed on the first point of the player's side, Todas Tablas, Fails and Fallas, or where blots are not captured at all, Provincial and Imperial. Todas Tablas has the opening position of Irish and backgammon, but blots are not put on the bar, so this may have been inherited from other games such as Cans Tablas. Backgammon, first known from 1645, was thought to be faster and more exciting than its predecessor. Play is much the same, with contrary movement and the same starting position as Irish. Blots are placed on the bar, and no men may be moved until blots are re-entered. In backgammon there were four levels of winning. A player bearing off their men before their opponent is a simple win, which is improved by bearing off the last men by throwing a double. A greater win is by a player bearing off all of their men before their opponent has borne off any. This is a gammon. And a backgammon is when a player bears off all their men before their opponent and completing this in throwing a double. The game of backgammon became so popular in Britain in the 18th century that the range of other games that have been played since at least the 13th century and probably earlier diminished. 
However, in France, the game of Trick Track survives, and in America, AC Doocy is still popular. In Britain, the tables board became known as the backgammon board, and 18th century boards took on many forms, including the box variety, illustrated here by caricaturist Thomas Rowlandson, though this was painted in the very early 19th century. Generally, though, the elongated and narrow form of each of the two panels was popular in the 18th century and into the 19th century. A final word on the origins of what we now call backgammon. First, we must differentiate between backgammon, the game, and the concept of games played on the table's board. Backgammon, as a game, has no single origin before the 15th century game of Irish. Prior to that, there were a range of games that may have contributed to its development. And so the question we must ask is what are the origins of these games? On the one hand, we have the slimmest of evidence for games of parallel movement in the board from Ostia, which is no more than an interpretation of the evidence, and Zeno's game, which quite possibly represents much stronger evidence. On the other hand, we have Nard, a game of contrary movement from the 5th or 6th century, but with rules reconstructed from much later literature. Alfonso's Book of Games from the late 13th century has a range of parallel and contrary movement games, including one that is comparable with Nard in setup and movement, as well as a game comparable with that played by Zeno. One may question then, what are the ancestors of Alfonso's games? It would be fair to say that games of the Persian and Arab traditions were likely to influence the Alfonso text but also games which originate within the Roman world would probably have an important role. Ultimately, though, both the Persian game and the late Roman game, played by Zeno, are descendants of the earlier three-row boards invented in the dying days of the Roman Republic. Our book, Historic Board and Dice Games, Roman to 1800, has rules to over 25 historic tables games, as well as a description of their Roman origins. On our website you will also find reproductions of early tables boards, as well as many other historic games, dice and playing cards. Thank you for watching.